Thank you and uh, good morning and pleasure to be here. I'm happy that so many of you could find your way uh, and, and make it all the way out here. Um, I thought it was a, a really nice experience on this topic of action to climb these steep steps coming up here and find myself holding on with both hands to the railing, uh, but at the same time feeling super excited about climbing high up and, and looking down and, and feeling that uh, you know, your, your heart starts beating just that little bit faster. Because um, I think this is one of the key things about action to me and that's what I want to talk about is um, how action in, in some ways is closely related to death. So uh, just to start out on a, on a light beat this morning, I'm also going to be talking about death. Um, action when it comes to filmmaking, and this is what I'm uh, mostly averse in, uh, means mainly two things. Uh, first of all, it's a, it's a genre. We, we all know the genre action film, we have, uh, you know, which is mainly based on, uh, you know, exciting, an exciting plot line where you have, uh, you know, explosions, car chases, violence, and, uh, and sometimes, um, you know, overshadowing uh, character development and, and more complex uh, storylines. So it's really about the excitement of, of, of these ruptures of, of violence, you might say. Um, the other thing that we uh, associate with, violent, with action sorry, is um, obviously that it's the director's word on a film set. The director calls action, which means the camera is rolling, sound is going, uh, the actors are ready, and when we, when we say action, it's, you could say, a command to open up a, a, a space uh, in which we create meaning on which we search for uh, storytelling and the truths that storytelling brings to us. So we make sense of the world by calling action. It's a kind of an invitation, you could say, to let life in, uh, to create a, 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 a certain kind of possession that happens in front of the camera and behind the camera, uh, looking for truth in that camera moment. So it's a frame on reality. My main experience with, uh, with action as a filmmaker was uh, on my um, uh, war documentary, Armadillo, which uh, I don't know how many of you in here know uh, Armadillo or have seen it. Sea of hands. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, well... Um, I made that film in, back in 2010, and later on I've gone on to do other things. Uh, among, uh, among other things, uh, the, I directed one episode of the latest season of uh, True Detective, uh, the HBO TV series, which some of you probably are familiar with as well. But today I'm mainly going to be talking about Armadillo for various reasons. Um, when that film came out, it, uh, I think it's safe to say that it caused quite a big splash in, uh, in Denmark. Uh, it really stirred the debate about the war in Afghanistan, and uh, it did the same in, in a number of other countries as well. But to just remind you a little bit of what it was that hit Denmark, and to you, those of you who haven't seen it, I'm just going to play the, the, the trailer of the movie. It's unfortunately, it doesn't have... Uh, UK subtitles, but um, I think you you get the general picture even if you don't uh, even if you don't understand Danish. And one more time.
Okay, um, the sound probably didn't make much, or most of you couldn't probably hear what uh, was being said in this film, but anyway, that's uh, less important. The main part that I wanted you to get from this was a certain emotion or maybe uh, a feeling of a pulse and, um, you know, the kind of darkness and, and, and horror that, that this film unfolded. Um, we decided to make this film back in 2008 uh, because um, me and the people involved with the project uh, felt that the war in Afghanistan was something that had slipped completely off the agenda in Danish media. Uh, we didn't really care about it. Uh, no one was reading the news about it. Only once in a while when a Danish soldier got hurt or, or died, you know, it might make the, the, the middle sections uh, in the dailies. And um, I, for one, thought that that was, uh, that was absurd. And uh, I wanted to bring the war into the Danish living rooms and make us connect with it and, and talk about it again. But, uh, but more than that, I, uh, I think there was something else at stake for me because I'm not a, a, a war reporter at heart. I didn't go there to be a, 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 a kind of a hero filmmaker bringing back this important story for people. I was, I was just interested in finding out, you know, what is war, what is violence, what does it do to us, uh, and what does it mean for, for, for a nation such as Denmark to be involved in this bloody conflict. And um, so you could say my, my quest was a quest of a filmmaker trying to make sense of of reality rather than, rather than create a political statement about that reality. Um, and, uh, and, and in order to do that, I tried to embed myself with the troops. Uh, I tried to become a, a kind of a, a, an anthropologist filmmaker, feeling and sensing the same things as soldiers would, were, were going through, but, but trying to keep a distance and trying to tell that story at the same time. And um, what, I, what I found in, in Afghanistan was a disturbing truth to myself. It's something that I, I could not have, have uh, predicted. Uh, maybe people more uh, with, with deeper insights than, than me could have, but, but I certainly you know, went there with, with an open mind and maybe a naive idea um, about what I was going to, to experience. Because I remember... Uh, that going to Afghanistan, you know, I thought, uh, now I'm going to make a film about fear. And uh, I, I'm going to make a film about the fact that w once the bullets are real, once we're off the training grounds, we're all going to piss our pants and run back into camp and call our parents. Um, and what I realized was that exactly the opposite thing happened. Um, after the first sort of encounters with the, with the enemy, uh, the soldiers I was filming got more and more excited. and They wanted to get closer. They wanted to get closer to, to the killings, to the violence, and to feeling that certain kind of excitement that that sparks in you. Um, this frustrated me for a long time because I couldn't... I couldn't make a movie. As a, as a filmmaker, you kind of, uh, a documentary filmmaker particularly, you, you prey on people's emotions. So you want, uh, you want an obstacle. You want uh, people to cry. You want people to get scared. You want people to, you know, fight for something. And in this case, they were just, you know, they were just going for it. They were leaping right into the, the lion's den, you could say. And it took me a, a while to understand that. It took me a while to understand that that was actually a much more interesting film because it, it unfolded something about uh, our, uh, you know, our excitement about feeling close to death, feeling that we're staring right into to this uh, abyss of meaninglessness, trying to make sense of ourselves, trying to feel alive. And I think personally that's, that's one of the reasons that soldiers keep going back to war is that they've already, they, once they've experienced that thing, they get marked and they get burnt with it. 
Um, so obviously what happened in Armadillo was at, at some point this, this pressure uh, boiled over and uh, the soldiers found themselves in a very uh, close-up combat situation with uh, some Afghan warriors and, uh, and they ended up uh, killing them uh, you know, very effectively. And, and killing them in a way that, you know, to some might be perceived as uh, going too far and, and, and committing war crimes and just shooting the brains out of defenseless people, which you're not allowed to do. Um, now, I just want to moderate myself and say I'm not, I'm not accusing these soldiers of having committed war crimes, but, but what happened in Armadillo was certainly a gray zone situation where uh, one could discuss whether these um, dead Afghans should have been, uh, uh, you know, taken away in a, in a helicopter and taken to hospital, as the, as the rules of war prescribes. Um, the interesting thing about this incident for me as a filmmaker was, you know, that it, was, it was such a pivotal moment for this adrenaline rush and this, uh, that, you know, almost like a blood rush that, that spilled over and became... Uh, a desire to kill. Um, and afterwards, you know, once the, once the kind of excitement about the killings had, had, uh, had um, blown over, the difficult task was to find a story that could fit, you know, that could pass juridically so that you wouldn't get sentenced. And that could also pass uh, in a way so you could see yourself as a good human being that did things for the right reasons. Um, you know, once you shoot someone and, uh, and you're a soldier, you need to be able to tell yourself that you did it for the right reasons. And you didn't do it because you had a desire to kill someone. You did it because you had to do it. Um, so that was, that was really the, the, uh, the dark truth that kind of, you know, that Armadillo unfolded and that it, that it unfolded in, in myself. Um, and, 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 and the whole aftermath of that incident then was, okay, so what else could we have done? Uh, am I a good person? Am I a bad person? Um, will this pass back home? Will people ever understand us? Is this, is this an extra, uh, you know, is this a situation that's so far outside of normality that we can't speak about it when we get, when we get back to Denmark? And these are the, the challenges that, that soldiers were, were faced with in this situation. And um, it was very interesting for me to see what happened as well when, when this film hit audiences and when this film hit the media in Denmark. Um, because it produced the same kind of shock. Um, it produced the same kind of shock to be exposed to the violence in the film as the soldiers had experienced. Of course, there was a, a difference in, in the level because you're not there physically, you're watching a film. But to the extent that the film was successful in its, in its purpose, which was to transcend the, the, the raw feeling of being there and the excitement about the violence to audiences and then taking that, pulling that blanket away on the people's feet and making them see the horror of it at the same time, it did produce a shock. And, uh, and what happened was the people came away discussing the film in, in, from very different positions. Some would say, well, you know, what do you expect? We're at war. This is what happens in war. And if people think that that's too much, they're just naive. Uh, and others would say, well, this is, this, is, um, this is terrible. We need to, you know, we need to pull our troops out. This is brutalizing to the soldiers and to Denmark as a nation. Um, so what's left at the, at the end of that, I guess, is, is, the, is a very uh, blunt fact that human beings as a species hold the capacity for violence. 
which is not a, a, a you know a shocking truth, but 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 once you once you um, once you start acknowledging what that means, is that you know we actually have a desire and a capability for killing. We're the only species probably on Earth that has that, you know, that kills for fun, and and at the same time, the only species that get traumatized by it. So these two emotions exist at the same time, the desire and the trauma. And uh, I think this has got something to do with our effort to make sense of the world. We can't understand basically why we're here. We can't understand that we have to die. And then we have to go and scratch that surface and, you know, and try to you know, uh, uh, you know, feel that we're alive and, you know, what is this, this, this uh, ultimate darkness on the other side of life? Um, and as they say in, in, uh, in, in uh, season one of True Detective, you search and you search for yourself and for a meaning and for a sense of who you are, and at the end of the day, you find a monster. Um, and I think... The genre of action film, in some ways, is an entertainment of that desire. You know, we, we, we have a lust for violence. We like to see it. And then we can, you know, make an ent entertainment industry that, that caters for that. Or once we really dive deep into what this means, it unfolds very scary truths about human beings. And, and certainly for me, when I was making this film, I kept wondering, you know, okay, this happens time and time again. In, time and time again in history, we we experience these huge atrocities. You know, the, the concentration camps in, in Nazi Germany, uh, the killings in in um, in uh, Kosovo and and uh, that whole conflict, uh, the genocides in Rwanda, and um, and now I think we we are we're facing a new crisis of the same kind of dimensions, which is what we're seeing with, uh, with all the, um, the immigrants that are crossing the Mediterranean Sea, um, that we you know, struggle more and more to see as, as fellow human beings. We struggle more and more to, to have the empathy that's gonna allow them to enter our societies. We're so scared of what it's gonna do to us and we're so uh, occupied with building these borders. Um, so apparently we don't get much, much wiser as human beings. Apparently we go through one generation to the next and we keep on doing these things. We keep on uh, you know, not uh, learning from our experiences. And I think there is a fundamental uh, challenge at stake, which is that we, we refuse to see that we, we contain this dark space within ourselves. We, we try always to tell the good story. You know, we try always to excuse it. We try to say to, about the soldiers, well, what else could they have done? They were faced, in, they were put in this situation. They were, you know, having to fight for their own survival. But we forget the, the, the one truth is that they put themselves there in the first place. They took the choice in the first place to go there because they were excited, because they wanted that experience, because they wanted that adventure. And, um, and we all want to be there. We all want to be there where the, where the world makes sense, where we feel called upon, when, uh, where the history page gets, gets turned. And... Um, so that desire, I guess, is, is in some ways the same for a, for a young soldier as it is for me as a movie maker when I call action and I want to explore a certain truth or a certain meaning about life. I get possessed by that, you know, by that search, by that hunt. Um, so you could ask yourself, what does this mean? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I just think that um, opening up a space where you can allow yourself in some safe confinement 
to, to look into that darkness and to feel it and to, un, and to try and understand it is, is very, very important. And I guess that's why we have art, that's why we have museums, that's the places where we can confront ourselves with taboos and with, uh, with the darker truths, with meaning. Um, it's, it's the one space that we can open up where we, we have to enter and not feel scared. We have to enter and leave all our uh, prejudiced assumptions behind and, and, and try to look at humanity and the human condition in, in, in an explorative kind of way. So, um, praise the arts. <laughs> I don't know if my 20 minutes are up, but I feel like maybe that's a, a good note to end up on. Thank you so much. Thank you.